What is going on 27 squad? Welcome back to another video and today we are going over the Giants mini camp day two. So we got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of good things, and um, and, and not really a lot of bad things, just a lot, really a lot of good things. Same as yesterday, we're, we're picking up right where we left off from yesterday. Uh, quickly, before we get into what's really been going on in minicamp, I want to get into who is missing out on practice, just in case you're looking at the article or watching this video and wondering where these guys are at. First off, Sterling Shepard, the man of the hour, the one who's been lighting up practice so far for the Giants, he had to miss practice with a wrist injury so he was uh replaced i believe benny fowler took his place probably um so then uh safety jabril pepper also was out with a dental procedure so he had a dental appointment and cornerback sam beal missed due to personal reasons i that really worries me it really worries me in respects to it's giving me flashbacks to like eli apple and uh things like that i'm just i'm just not i'm not happy about that Hopefully everything's okay as far as mentally and, you know, with his family and things like that. He doesn't have to miss more time. Um, and also outside linebacker Marcus Golden was back with the first team. I believe he was working out things uh, uh, like working out an injury. And Nate Solder is coming back. He's rehabbing from that ankle injury and he's on the bike uh, on in this practice. So he was on the bike and he, he should be back soon. By the way, O'Shane Zimenez was getting... Uh, some first team reps as well alongside with uh, Lorenzo Carter. So O'Shane Zimenez was there. Also, by the way, Zim when Zimenez was working with the first team, he had an opportunity to work in the slot against Golden Tate and it actually worked. He covered Golden Tate and he did a, a fine job at that. The ball wound up incomplete. Hopefully, there's no there's no uh, highlights so far that I'm recording this. It's like 428, no highlights. I'm kind of worried that there's not going to be any highlights. So let's talk about a couple of uh, standouts right now. We're going to talk about Darius Slayton is the first standout. And it says here the fifth round pick out of Auburn made two of the best catches from Wednesday's practice. The first was a touchdown from Alex Tanney who threw a fade to the back left corner of the end zone. Sl Slayton not only got a piece of it at first, but after a few bobbles he was able to secure it for the score during the work uh, during work in the red zone. Sec the second was from Daniel Jones down the right sideline matching up a nice over the shoulder catch with a perfect ball. In between, Slayton racked up a handful of other receptions as he continued to show he is more than just his 4-3-9 speed. So that's very, very relieving to hear. Slayton is actually picking up uh, and developing very well as a wide receiver. I was worried about that, but he's working on those hands. He's showing he's not just a deep threat. He could be a route runner too and catch those short and intermediate uh, 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 balls. So. It says here, Mike Shula, our offensive coordinator, also said, and I'm uh, picking up from a quote here, he says, he's got more confidence in his hands, he's catching the ball more consistently, I think he's a good route runner. That, uh, that was one thing of coming out of the draft I was anxious to see is how he did with maybe, with maybe our routes, which were maybe a little bit different than the routes he ran at Auburn. So that, that's a good thing. They're, they're, they're trying him out at new routes. They're trying him out with a, with a more expansive route tree. And he's doing a pretty consistent job at that. And he's also catching the ball, which is something that I'm sure out of, out of college they were worried about. Uh, but they, they, it wanted to be a pretty good pick so far in practice. So far in practice. So the next up is Eli Manning. And I want to give my shouts out to Eli. Everybody thinks I'm hating on Eli. Everybody thinks I'm like 100% sold on Daniel Jones now. Listen, Eli's still the starter coming into this, but trust me, if worse comes to worse, I'm throwing Daniel Jones in there. Eli Manning, yeah, I'm not going to be biased. I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, he won us two Super Bowls. He should, you know, run us into the ground at, at the late of, at late of his career, even though we have a young quarterback that needs to develop and needs to get some playing time. You know, I'm not going to just, you know, sit back and watch. Eli, I'm going to give my props to Eli. Eli started off very well today he started off again with seven and uh, seven on sevens and 11 on 11s combined he i believe he was 13 of 17 for a couple of touchdowns and he had 10 straight completions before the 11th was dropped by uh benny fowler so it wasn't even his fault um but 
That being said, it says here, Manning kicked off the day with a deep pass down the middle, which the Giants have been working a lot this spring. On this one, he found a wide receiver, Corey Coleman, for a big hookup. Manning later hit tight end, Rhett Ellison, with a nice pass up the, the, le uh, the left side. But where the quarterback did most of the damage was in the red zone. He hooked up with wide receiver Benny Fowler and, and Ellison again for touchdowns. So Red Ellison is becoming a really, really good target. A really um, favorited target by by uh, Eli Manning. So hopefully, I, I will because Evan Ingram right now isn't playing. So Ellison is taking those first team reps. So maybe Evan Ingram would be taking those touchdowns. But Red Ellison is playing pretty consistently right now. Um... And then the next guy, the next standout is T. I mean, CJ Conrad, guys. My favorite undrafted rookie that we've got so far. It's got to be between him and like Mark McLaurin right now. But CJ Con or, or Reggie White, but CJ Conrad, man. CJ Conrad is looking really good. And it says here that uh, number 47 uh, had some big gains today from Tanny, including another deep pass down the middle and a one-handed grab. Then Jones found Conrad wide open for an easy score during red zone drill. So I'm absolutely loving CJ Conrad. Hopefully he makes this roster. Um, it says here on other other notes and stuff like that. It says here Jones and Fowler connected on a play. A nice play down the left sideline early on in practice. Jenkins broke a long pass intended for a wide receiver Alonzo Russell. Quarterback Kyle Oletta avoided disaster when he could have when he couldn't handle a shotgun snap in the red zone, but he quickly regained control and fired a pass to Russell in the right uh, front right corner of the end zone for a score. Michael Thomas also forced a fumble, and it says here Scott Simonson made a twirling catch from Jones, so uh, got got a little ballerina in him. So let's quickly go over. Uh, the sideline notes from John Schmelk says here, Wednesday's practice was dominated by the offense and it started early during the first competitive season of practice called half-line pass drills. Instead of one-on-one -on -one passing drills, only half of the field is active at a time with limited players on any given play. Eli Manning had a good day and it started with a perfect deep post to Corey Coleman. Coleman caught uh, caught the ball in stride. Manning later hit wide receiver Benny Fowler on a perfect slant for a touchdown during red zone drills. Again, whenever we hear Coleman's name, we're going to hear Benny Fowler's name. They are competing neck and neck, guys. So far, this whole entire OTA has been Benny Fowler and Corey Coleman. Benny Fowler, Corey Coleman. So uh, I'm loving it so far. Uh, we then move on to Daniel Jones. Says says here, later on in half line, Jones unleashed a perfect deep ball down the left sideline to Benny Fowler. In the last team session of practice, Jones, for the second straight day, threw a deep fade, a perfect deep fade to the outside shoulder of Darius Slayton down the sideline. Slayton also had a great leaping catch uh, grab in the back of the corner of the end zone, reaching up to bring in a pass in the pass from Jones, getting his feet down. Later on, he caught a perfect slant from Jones with room to run and not much between him and the end zone. Slayton is getting consistent separation and finishing plays. His speed is apparent. Slayton, Fow Slayton Fowler and Coleman took advantage of Sterling Shepard not being on the field and have productive days. Uh, I want to uh, pose a good question for you guys. Slayton, Darius Slayton, is there a chance he becomes wide receiver number three? I mean, we should be talking about that now. I mean, we're seeing Coleman. Yes, Coleman is playing fantastic. Benny Fowler is playing fantastic. But one thing that those two players do not have, and Corey Coleman is fast, but one thing those two players do not have is Darius Slayton's speed. If he gets to Coleman's level of route running, and even though Coleman's not the best route runner, um, as far as consistency with catching the ball, and, and add that with his blazing speed, he may find himself as the third wide receiver on this on this roster, and Benny Fowler and Coleman might be the fourth and fifth. Really good fourth and fifth wide receivers, but might I add. But um, looking good right now, man. Really looking good. I love the wide receiver competition. I'm going to make a video later on, maybe tomorrow, about a potential wide receiver I want us to sign that a, that a, uh, a supporter, a subscriber, did mention to me on Instagram. By the way, you guys, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, then we move on to Alex Tanney. I don't really like talking about it just because I don't have any hope in Alex Tanney. If he plays good, he plays good, but it's all right. But it says here, Alex Tanney got into the mix at the end of the period, hitting tight end 
uh, CJ Conrad on a deep over the uh, deep ball over the middle. Conrad also scored a touchdown during red zone drills on a blown coverage and had a great one-handed catch reaching towards the sidelines. Red Ellison also caught uh, caught what could have been a deep touchdown from Eli Manning when he got wi wide open in the back of the defense. He also had a nice leaping catch in the back of the red zone, back of the end zone during the red zone period on a nice, nicely thrown fade pass from Manning just over safety. Michael Thomas, tight end Scott Simonson also made a leaping, great leaping catch going up and getting a short pass from Jones. I think that's that twirling catch that they were talking about before. So Kyle Oletta is back from that knee injury. And Kyle Oletta isn't really throwing out, you know, crazy. Like he's not really competing for the backup spot as like Tanny and Jones are. He's kind of in his own league. He's kind of the odd man out if, if you ask me right now, Kyle Oletta is. It says here his first rep in red zone drill starting with a shotgun snap that he bobbled. He managed to handle the ball and throw it to uh, Alonzo Russell. We mentioned that already for a touchdown. And then we've got Saquon Barkley just being Saquon Barkley. There was this funny altercation here with Saquon Barkley uh, as he bounced a run uh, to the outside towards DeAndre Baker. And of course, they're not going to tackle each other and things like that. But it says here that uh, Saquon Barkley, as he was going back to the, to the huddle, he was saying, you better be ready to tackle me on that, Bake. So uh, I, I'm anxious to see that during practice when they have the pads on and things like that, see if, if anything like that happens. But uh, hopefully we get something like that soon. Uh, it also says here that Barkley was motioned out during, uh, I guess it was 11 on 11. Barkley was motioned out uh, to the slot. And then Lorenzo Carter had to cover him. And of course, Lorenzo Carter couldn't keep up with Barkley. And uh, he got a huge gain uh, uh, in, in the field. Michael Thomas uh, stripped the ball from Reggie White Jr. And it was a, a uh, forced fumble. So good job there. He also anticipated a short pass play action to Conrad, which would have been a big hit. And then what I mentioned before, O'Shane Zimenez continues to show off his athleticism as a pass rusher. I'm anxious. It says here, John Schmelk is anxious to see Semenes in training camp and see him uh, see him produce in a more physical environment and also what I was saying before he's also doing some coverage uh, coverage things so uh, that is OTA number no not OTA sorry guys that is the mini camp day two for you guys let me know what you guys say in the comment section below be sure to leave a like if you guys enjoyed it comment and subscribe follow me on Instagram follow me on Twitter and for all Giants news and NFL news alike I'm Kid Blue and I'll see you guys in the next video